What do you think? Are you looking at me like we're good to go? Yeah. Well, I don't see. Oh, there's the live thing right there. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, my face just went off the screen, which is probably maybe that's a good thing. Um, so, we just want to make sure that we're, we've got the technical part. I think we got it straight now. Um, so, if anybody's out there and happens to be logged on, could you just send us a message that, hey, Chief, you're coming in. We can hear you. You know, we tried to work on some things about where it's cutting off or, or delayed. And if that happens, I apologize. Um, I can tell you, I'm touching nothing, right? I'm touching nothing. So, like I said, if anybody is 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 logged in, if you just send me a message or us a message, it, it it's it's looking. I would appreciate that. So, see a couple things pop up. Kelly, does that sound like we're okay? Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we're good. Mm -hmm. We don't have any comment yet. Is he coming? Look, I see the live thing, and I think when the live thing's on, it means that we're live. Oh, here we look go. here. There we go. God bless. Well, thank you so much. So, very, so at least we know that we're broadcasting and we're 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 on. So, thank you, thank you all very much. So this is um. So first of all, happy New Year, right? Twenty twenty two. Seems like we just had Thanksgiving yesterday. So I want to wish everyone. Of our residents here and anyone who, who's uh, who's on today, a very very happy new year, a blessed new year, and uh, gosh, let's put 2021 behind us and and move forward. Man, you know this uh, the, the pandemic and the stuff that we dealt with the last year and a half, two years, it's just been really impactful. Um, uh, I was at a church service just on Sunday and we we're, were listening to people talk about, hey Robbins, good to have you, thank you. Uh, I was listening to the pastor talk about some of the challenges that that. We as a you know not only our our city and community our state but our nation around the world is faced, so it's it's just a lot. So I, I'm I'm ready to move on to 2022 and, and move our department um, forward as we keep going. So Cameron Cameron aren't you supposed to be in school, man? So good good afternoon, uh, Cameron. It's good to have you on board, buddy. Uh, and thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm getting some feedback, Robin. Good to have you. Thank you, Miss um, Guzman. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. So a couple of things um, that I'll share with you. Kind of, we'll talk a little bit about the crime data where we've been. Sorry, I was about about one minute late today. I was just finishing up an, an interview, uh, really focused on our shot spotter system, but uh, also on technology, right? And that's something we, we can touch base on. Uh, while we're here, we'll talk about our recruiting efforts, kind of where we where we stand right now, what we have coming in, uh, and where I would like to be. I had a meeting with our recruiting division. Uh, uh, about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes ago, just talking about some things that uh, we'd like we'd like to do and things I think are important. Uh, we'll talk about our our academy, uh, our promotion ceremony we're going to put in place in February for our new sergeants, and then I'll talk a little bit about where we finished out for the year. I won't go too much into that because on January the Kelly the twenty eighth, January the twenty eighth, um, we'll we'll do our year end press conference. Uh, and there I will talk about our crime numbers overall. You'll see the crime numbers for each precinct. We'll talk about the number of guns that we recovered in our city. Uh, we'll talk about where our crime is. We did have about a 2% increase in crime for the year. Um, we'll look at our domestic violence. Those are things that we track. Uh, some hindrances we had with community youth and outreach because of the pandemic. Uh, but we were still out there. Um, and I think that's important that we, we stay focused on that. We'll talk a lot about our partnerships. Um, with our school division and, and the fire department, our city uh, city offices. We'll talk about uh, some areas that we focused on for the year, some neighborhoods, and then we'll, re we'll, we'll talk about uh, neighborhoods that we want to focus on next year. We'll talk about our staffing. You know, it's not just crime. There's so much more that goes into, in, into the, the, the police department and our community and our city. We'll talk about our dispatchers, how many we have and where I want to be at. And then we'll talk about our numbers in our department and, and, like I said, the upcoming academy and how many academies we plan to have next year. I will tell you, and I just got some more news before I came in here, um, we have lost some valuable people in this department. And when I say lost, I mean that have gone on to different things, whether it's the federal system or the private, pri private um, guess what's the word, private entity, uh, the private sector, if you will. Now, my first response is, Ugh, you know, all this talent, right? But I also understand that, and I, I believe that people are looking at this department, that they see the quality of individuals 
um, that we have here. And so I can understand why the FBI or the DEA or the ATF would recruit from this department. I can see why individuals in technology would recruit from this department. And I never want to see anybody get held back. You know, it, it's people have to make the best decision, um, but it's also hard to see some talent leave that have really taken us, taken this department to the next level. So those that have left, uh, I wish them the very, very best. Um, they, uh, they have certainly been a great service to this department. They're outstanding individuals, and I would never put their, their you know, their names out, but, but individuals that have left, sworn in civilian, or that we've notified, um, we're not losing officers to other departments, but we are losing them to um, our, the, our federal partners and federal system and private entity and technology. And uh, we just have, the, I'm very, very, when I, if you go back and look at any of the, I don't know, these aren't pod, what do you call it? Inter chat with the chief, right? If you go back and look at any, for the years that we've been doing this, I always talk about, I am humbled to work with such professional people. And when you see people advance and move on, whether it's the new chief in Albemarle County that came out of Newport News uh, in North Carolina, the new chief in, in Pineville, North Carolina, uh, that came out of Newport News, the chief down in Pensacola, Florida, that came out of uh, Newport News just in the last two years. That's impressive. Those aren't entities in our state. Those are entities in, in other states, right? That, that they're, they're hearing about what we're doing, they're seeing what we're doing uh, in those interviews. And so... Chief Bullhurst and Chief Hudson and Chief Randall, I, 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 I touch base, I talk to all of them over the holidays. Um, but it's, it's hard to see people who've been in the department, uh, but it's also very rewarding. And, and I just wish them all the best and I thank them for their service. So uh, a couple things, let me, make, let me get caught up here. Jewel, Jules, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Thank you, um, Teresa, good morning Chief. Thank you for all you keep, Teresa, thank you very much. Uh, let me just go back a little bit. Let me catch uh, Dottie. Well, God bless you, Dottie. Thank you. I don't know if everybody would agree with you, but I appreciate that. Miss Cox, thank you. Thank you, Carrie, for being here. I appreciate that. Anna, uh, one minute late. You're doing better on your time. I'm working on it, Anna. You know what, Anna? It's the elevators. The elevators are slowing me down. Maybe I need to run down the hall and just take the back stairs. It's the elevators. Uh, but thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Uh, what did I miss, Joshua? Yeah, he just disappeared. Is he? <laughs> Where did, uh, Lena, it, I'm going to leave that one alone. Keith, appreciate you being on today. Uh, hope hope things are good well up there in Henrico County. Hope you guys are doing okay with any snow or ice that may be on the road. Be safe up there, my friend. Oh, my, I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone, too. Um, okay. So uh, I, I did want to share with you, uh, with, the, with our our. Uh, those that are logged on today, um, a little over, well, June, June, January 19th, we did lose a valuable member of our department. Um, December. What did I say? January. Yeah. December 19th, we lost a valuable member of our department. Sergeant Jerry Luce uh, had passed away. And Sergeant Luce had been in this department over 25 years. Uh, we had a, uh, what I thought was a beautiful, beautiful service, homegoing service, if you will. Um, uh, Jerry was my friend, and um, his family were able to come in from out of state, and um, it, it, it just the, the outpouring from the community and the officers that were there, but not just officers that work here, officers um, that had retired and, and that worked with Jerry. I, I thought it was even those that came from out of state. I just thought it was very very touching and very humbling. I pray that we did his family uh, or we did Jerry justice that his family. Uh, felt like we honored him the way we should. I pray that Jonna felt like we honored him the way we should. And, and Jonna, his, his significant other, I, I, I just, um, well, you know we love you and you mean the world to us. And, uh, you know, anything at all, we're just going to go day by day. Uh, but it was, it was, um, it was a good, it was a good memorial service to a friend who dedicated a lot of time to this department community uh, in and off of work. And uh, I miss my friend. We teased each other a lot, but uh, it was important for us to do that and and for us to uh, to show our respect. And I just want to thank the community that played a role in that. And it means a lot. All those of you that were in the um, the honor guard, um, Brianna, one of one of the young ladies who came and sang for us, just did amazing. It wasn't a dry eye. Just did an amazing job. And uh, I want to thank um, 
First Baptist Church, uh, and, and pastor there, and, and uh, Chaplain Satchel, just thank you so much for allowing us the use of your synagogue uh, and being able to be there in your, your place of worship. It was a beautiful setting, and anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, so the, uh, let me make sure I haven't, haven't missed anybody. Yeah, uh, Joshua, uh, I was just, I was just saying, wow, keep leading. We, uh, <laughs> Carlito, I, I miss you guys too, man. You guys stay safe up there. I tell you, I, I saw on the news that, that Henrico and Richmond and Northern Virginia were going to get some snow, man. So uh, I hope everybody is safe and being, and, and being, being careful up there. That's for sure. Uh, let's talk about cold weather. So yesterday, about nine o'clock, uh, myself and, and a lot of others uh, met at the food bank here in, in, in uh, the peninsula, just inside Hampton. And uh, Mayor Price had, had asked that we, we partnered together to bring awareness to, to hunger and asking people to donate. So Mayor Price has been and leading this effort for about the last five or six years as we celebrate Martin Luther King Day on Monday right to to have individuals encourage individuals to drop off food at the food bank so uh we we, we started yesterday well so last year was my first year uh and sheriff morgan gay morgan was there and the mayor and and uh, it was a long day it was hard work man a lot of people donated food i'm so very very thankful uh but last year it, i was like yeah, i'm gonna be smart this year so this year uh, myself and chief grinstead who were there last year but this year, myself and all the assistant chiefs came. We had our recruit class came, uh, rec uh, new officers are in training. Uh, we had some of our young adult police commissioners be there. And uh, man, we loaded it down. So it, we, we were moving, but I will tell you, we were bundled up, it was cold. Uh, and I think, if, I'm, if I got my numbers right, I think Mayor Price had told me the food bank was down about 18% from where they were the year before normal collections or where they like to be. So uh, there was a lot of people that came out, a lot of fraternities, a lot of a lot of individuals that, that just came and donated food. We got to weigh it, and 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 some donated checks, and there were some large donations. It was just a really great day. Now we all froze. I mean, it was cold. Don't get me wrong, but all we did is is have fun and interact with the citizens and community, and uh, we got to take some photographs and some pictures. So I really had a good time. I hope others did. Um, but yeah, we, we it was it was uh, it was a good day, and and I so I hope. Uh, I know that people will benefit from what was donated. I think, again, it goes to talk about our community, our city, and the compassion that we have for others, uh, seeing people uh, pull in, get out, give high fives, take pictures, and get back in the car where it was warm, shuttling the, the food and donations in and out. It was just great. A young man, uh, I think he was two, uh, gave me his baseball, and uh, we got to take a picture together, so it was kind of cool. Uh, and, so, and I kept that, so it was, it was kind of cool. So I, I want to thank anyone... That, that I want to thank one, the food bank. I want to thank Mayor Price for allowing us to, to be a part of that. And, and uh, all those that came out, young adult police commissioners, our, our, our academy class, and the officers, sergeants. You know, that, that I was humbled. And I told Chief Grinstead, look at the officers that are here. Look at the officers that came by, some that were working and some that weren't, that came by to help out for the day or an hour or two here. It was just, it was really, you know, it just, I am humbled to work with such great people in this profession. And I, I don't take that lightly. So I, I really had a good day. I was tired, uh, and uh, but I was able to, to have a, a good day. We stayed till about one or one thirty, and uh, and and I, I, Mayor Price and and Sheriff Morgan both were talking to me about you know with donations and how many people this can feed, and it was just really I learned a lot, and it was very I just really had a good time. So I want to thank everyone that donated. I want to thank the food bank, Mayor Price, Sheriff Morgan, and I want to thank all the Congressman Scott was there with us. And, I, and a lot of fraternities came. I just want to uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity and all those that, that took part. It was, it was a great event. Uh, Keith, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> so I'm going down here. We'll scroll down just a little bit, Kelly. Uh, I just can't see that last one because it has a comment thing. It was beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Yes, it, it, thank you very much. Annette, good afternoon, Chief. You are all, well, thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. Joyce, what's going on in the department? I miss not seeing y'all when I volunteer. Keep up. Joyce, we look for you to get back. It'd be fantastic. And thank you so much, Joyce. Thank you so much for all that you do. You mean the world to me. And, and thank you. Melinda, how are you doing? Hope all is well. It's good to have you with us today. Tony, most, la wait, most lazy anyway. 
Tony, help me out with that. Help me. Uh, Kent, hey, Chief, missing y'all. Kenda, miss you too. Um, door still open. Door still open. Uh, Keith, please pass our thoughts on to Katie Thine's family as we come up on the anniversary. Absolutely for letting us honor her. Keith, thank and thank you very much. I was, you know, I was talking about the event up in uh, and we had Ashland uh, last year. I was just talking to some people about that uh, and uh, how everybody got together and and the role you played, the donations that, that you made, the awareness and man, it was just a, it was just a really good event. So yeah, absolutely. And and you know, man, I was just talking about that event. Um, I think it was Sunday. I was sharing some people with the, with the church, at the church service about that. Uh, so who does, uh, your officers are reflect, your officers are reflect, reflection. Wow. Thank you so much. You get me choked up. Uh, since you're discussing hunger, can you discuss the homeless people that are staying in front of the shipyard entrance? There's a lot of homeless people in camp out mode in the, in the, I'm sorry, I just jumped a little bit. Okay. Uh, no, you're no, you're perfect. I think it's just because people uh, stay under the awnings to close down the street. Some of them lay on the ground asleep right in front of the 7-Eleven in broad daylight. Do you know if there are organizations helping them to find shelter or who we can contact to alert them of the people that need help? Um, who, who sent that in to me? That was Mimi. Miss Mimi. So that, that's, a, that's a great point. I, I will tell you, I... Um, uh, Chief Hires, former Captain Hires of the Southeast Community, was really looking at, at that. We work a lot with the Four Oaks uh, uh, Service Center there to to help people find housing, uh, to get people out of the elements. We still have the port system here in our city, where churches uh, allow individuals, you know, as long as they're there by a certain time, they'll even do transports to get them into shelter. Um, I wish, I wish that there was a, a quick fix. You know, when we talk about individuals that are homeless or suffering, you know, sometimes it's just somebody that's one one paycheck away, you know, from from a bad situation. And there are some that I, I think uh, suffer from mental illness. There are some that are down, or have been that are down on their luck or are having a hard time struggling. So, you're various. You're various. Those are great great points. We were just having that conversation, probably about ten days, about a week and a half ago, talking about some services of what can we do. We, we have a great relationship with Four Oaks. We have a great relationship with our uh, human services and Ben Thomas and her shop uh, of, of what can we do. The first thing, of course, is making sure that uh, we don't have people that are freezing, that we can get them out of the elements in the shelter, and that they can get a meal. Uh, I know there's a couple places that did feeding just last week, but I know those are you know, temporary. You know, Trying to put people in, and get them into housing and, and some type of training, um, you know, there's got to be a willing on both parts to do that. Uh, but there are a lot of different entities that are trying. And uh, it, it, sometimes it's, it's we're all doing things. We've we got to kind of open up a little bit. And how can we collectively, collectively help this individual? What can the police department do? What can fire department do? What can churches do? What can uh, human services do? What can Four Oaks do? And how can we work together? And, and sometimes needs are different. Um, but, yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And, and, and I certainly think it is an issue, not only here, been in other cities uh, to to work with and, and help our, our homeless population to see to seeing someone that not just handing them something temporarily or putting them up somewhere temporary but but how do we help them in the situation they're in so that, that that's a great question I think we just have to continue to focus uh, and not turn a blind eye to that to really interact uh, what we try to do is, is we do ask that our officers that when they run across someone they touch base one are they okay are there any services or any any, any medical situations have they had food? Uh, what are their plans? Are they here? Do they live here? Do they have family? Were they misplaced? Were they, you know, just kind of what assessing, you know, what we're dealing with and then what's the best response? But that that is a man. That that's a that was a great question and a great point you made. Uh, did I leave off with faith? Mm -hmm. uh, faith, thank you for being here today. I appreciate that, Roderick, my friend. Good to have you on board. National Mentoring Month. Wow, thank you, my friend. Now I had not, I did not know that. Okay. Very good, thank you. Uh, uh, Sylvia, it's good. Sylvia, how are you doing? I hope all is well. Uh, if you're back in school, you should be studying, right? But it's good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, good to have you here. Thank you, uh, and I appreciate all that you do. I, I, you know, Sylvia, we have a young adult police commissioners program. You all have heard me talk about that in the past. Freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior from from every high school. But we also have people that graduate, right, and move on. 
And, and so when I talked to Cameron, who's currently a young adult police commissioner, uh, Sylvia, who, who, who was a young adult police commissioner, and then, and then move, move, moved on to still stay in touch, that matters to me. Right, that matters to me. So some have, have left that program, graduated, and come back to work with the police department in sworn and civilian side, and then others stay engaged and still come out and help volunteer and stuff. So that means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, this year, the event is, oh, Keith, so you're going to do, uh, you're welcome to attend. Recruiting is definitely invited. Well, yeah, Keith, we'll do it. I had, I had a good time coming up there and seeing some of the agencies that I used to work hand in hand with a little north of here. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take you up on that. Save me a good space. Give our guys a good space recruit. Maybe like right as soon as people walk in, save us a good spot. Uh, uh, Randy, uh, I helped two of them last week, found shelter, gave them a job, all resources. Wow, they decided to go back to their normal life, back to the streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, you know, there's so many different factors. Um, that is a hard, hard problem that I know a lot of, a lot of jurisdictions, a lot of cities deal with. Um, but I think there are some amazing people doing amazing work. Uh, but it, that is a real, a real challenge um, and decisions that people make, whether it's out of, of fear or uncertainty or being, you know, I, it's just, that's very, very tough. Wow, Roderick, you're absolutely right. It, it, you know, the community and, 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 I, and I, I believe this from the bottom of my heart. I, I, I believe that the citizens of Newport News are some of the best people that I've interacted with. I, I see churches doing things. I see officers doing things on their days off. Um, our school system. I, I see teachers in our community um, uh, that go out and, and, and do things for, for our young people. Uh, businesses that, that are willing to hire hire people that may not have as much experience or, or, or some of the things that traditionally they need. Uh, I think we got to also think outside the box and be creative. Uh, in this, the you know I, I will tell you that that in, in addressing crime and serving our citizens, I don't always have the best. Right, I, I think I have to create an atmosphere. That, what, what are some other things that might work? Right, so when we embrace technology, I'm probably the worst technical person. I don't even touch the system when we turn it on. But I know the technology is, is a tremendous benefit and helps us do our job and do things better. Um, so yeah, I, I think we have to think outside the box sometimes, be creative, new ideas. And you know, hey, maybe what, what's working in some other cities or other states Maybe that's something we can tweak and make fit here in, in, in Newport News. And, and I think that Four Oaks was a perfect example of that. Uh, Quincy, the leadership over there, I was in a meeting with him last week uh, as we were talking about some things for Juneteenth. And, and uh, he just, he does an amazing job. It's a tremendous benefit. Uh, Ms. Peer, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, no, not, not by the dunk tank, Keith. I ain't getting in the water in May. Look, man, I ain't, I ain't getting in the water. Put me on the other side, over by maybe the uh, um, the funnel cakes or something like that. Uh, thank, Tricia, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Um, tap. Couldn't make it up. Tap. I'm not getting in the dunk tank. Tap. Listen. listen. I'm I'm all about people donating, but you, if you want to look for me, I'll be over by the 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 uh, the, uh, the funnel cake side, right? Maybe the the. the the hot pretzels or the pizza. I ain't trying to be in the in the dunk tank in May, uh, but I appreciate those who do. Uh, Dottie, there's a prayer event with about six. Wait, I missed, I'm sorry. There's about six pastors from the area to pray for the community down at Todd Stadium Saturday. Not sure what time. Do you know about this, Dottie? I do know about it. I know it was supposed to be uh, last Saturday, but they canceled it because of the wait last Sunday, Sunday. I believe it's let because they canceled it because of the weather and they rescheduled it. So I do know about it. I do plan to be there. Uh, I know several of the pastors that were on the flyer. And yeah, I absolutely will be there. There may be some officers that attend with me, but I, I will be there. Uh, originally, I talked to, um, oh gosh. Originally, it was supposed to be outside. And I think now it's inside Todd Stadium. And it's a prayer for peace over our community and, and a reduction in, in, uh, in, in violence and just a blessing for Newport News. And, and um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I planned to go, and then it got canceled because of weather, and it's been rescheduled. So absolutely, absolutely, I plan to be there. Uh, invocation and creativity makes the world go around. In innovation, yes, Roger, you're absolutely correct. And I think we always got to keep looking, you know, and, and, you know, it's important for me. We have a, a policy and uh, our policy writer, a lot of times I will ask her to look at other jurisdictions, other states. What are they doing about this particular issue? How do they handle that? And, and we kind of learn from each other. We belong to the different entities 
VACP, Virginia, Organi Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, IACP, International Association of Rights of Police across, the, across our country, um, and then uh, DCJS, what, uh, Department of Criminal Justice Services. What are some things that they see uh, that, that might be beneficial that's working somewhere else that we may not know about or not heard about? Uh, we certainly get calls about things that we're doing, whether it's our response to uh, mental illness by using our, our clinicians and fire department, our care team, right? Re reducing the number of interactions officers have with some of those uh, calls that are, are individuals who might have some mental illness issues or medication mm -hmm. issues, issues with depression, that we have professionals there. Uh, we certainly get a lot of calls about our domestic violence uh, division that we have. And we get starting to get more and more calls about some technology we're experimenting with. I just did an interview about Shot Spotter and and how I believe it is a benefit, uh, all those things in technology. So it's all about sharing and, and, and what may work here may not work somewhere else and what works somewhere else we might tweak to make it fit Newport News. So yeah, I, I think Robert, that's a, that's a great point, man, that, that, that you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, Don, if you find info, please let me know. I would love to be part of the prayer event. So, so it's at Todd Stadium and I, gosh, I don't want to say the wrong time. Uh, for something, I think it was two to three, but I don't want to say the wrong time. Uh, but it is at Todd Stadium, and uh, I thought it was supposed to be scheduled for last Sunday. And because of the weather, uh, all that rain we got, and, and it was rescheduled. So it's coming up uh, this Saturday or this Sunday. Um, but I, if we get it, I'll put it on our, our Facebook page as well. Or I'll post it on, on the police our website. But it's a, uh, it, I you know, I'm, I'm a strong man of faith and. Um, I, I believe that there is power in prayer, and, and I think it's one of the things that we are very, very blessed in our city, and I think it does make a difference. Um, come on, Chief. Mor morale booster and team building event for employees. So, so um, I will tell you a couple of things we've done is we've bought some new furniture and some new carpet. We tried to increase some things for some people to work, and we're getting some people in some bigger workspace. Um, more update, you know, trying to make, trying to, to bring the things that they need, and and um, but I think everybody's got to play that part of morale. Everybody that you know, when officers and their sergeants, right, their sergeants and lieutenants, every 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 level. And I think that that I set the tone for that, um, and I hope I do that by trying to create this as a family atmosphere um, that we uh, hold each other accountable. That that I believe that that good work environment and 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 good relationships inside play a role when we interact with our community. Now that doesn't mean that people don't get upset sometimes. We, we fight just like any family. We don't always agree, and that's a good thing. If we always agree, it means only one person's doing the thinking. So, uh, but we bounce ideas off off of each other, and I, and I will say this. I say it to individuals uh, personally, and I, and I say it here on this venue over and over and over again. I do a weekly video where I put out the same thing. I am honored to work with the men and women who, who join this profession and this agency. Sworn and civilian both. I realize, I know, I did. I came in on my day off and interviewed a young man who wanted to join this department, and we, and we, we interviewed him on, over the weekend so we didn't have to keep coming back. And, uh, man, he was excited, and I think he called his sister first. And, um, but those little things matter. And, and I want people to know that they're, they're, they're valued here, that they matter. If you join this department, sworn of civilian, you're not a number. You become part of this family, we become, by default, part of yours. Uh, doesn't mean we won't disagree, uh, but it means this, that you matter to me. The, the men and women in records, they matter to me. The men and women in, in dispatch, they matter to me. Those that work around the clock, the detectives, the officers that are here on their, on their time away from their families on the holidays, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they matter. Those that come in and cover for other people so they can be off on Christmas morning with their family and they have children. Uh, those that, that uh, respond out in this cold weather, right, in, in climate weather, to look out for, for our citizens, our, they matter to me. So people are valued, right? And all the different entities we have, people are valued. And, and nothing else. Um, I want people to know that they matter. Because I believe what, what individuals do, officers, or our civilians that work in this agency. I believe they, they make a difference. They make a difference, and I appreciate them. Uh, where did I get? Uh, hey, Chief, this is Abdella. Why, yep, using mom's using your mom's Facebook account. Oh, my gosh. Uh, senior night is tomorrow at Midtown Rec Center for the schools that have a swim meet tomorrow night. I hope you and Lieutenant Morton can attend. 
they will be announcing and celebrating the, uh, the seniors and accolades along with the college. Uh, uh, hope you see you guys there. It starts at 630. So it's at Midtown Community Center. Is that right? All right, I'll try to get by, but I'm telling you, I ain't going near any water. I'm just letting you know. Whatever you might be thinking. I'm going to tell your mom you're on your Facebook page, too. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to swing by there. 630 tomorrow. Okay. I got you. Uh, good afternoon, Chief Drew. There's a lot of homeless people over town. At the, yeah, I, I I will tell you, we um, we get reports. Um, and some were able to help and, and, and get connected with the right resources. One of the posts earlier, I don't know if you saw it, an individual helped someone, even got them a job, and they kind of chose to go back. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Miss Dance, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, hey, Chief, I would like to speak with you regarding the future of if you have any time, as you may aware, the last three projects we worked on did not happen. It was disappointing, but yeah, it's 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 really hard. I, uh, last year and this year with COVID, um, but I do have some ideas, and I do think there's some things that we can do to to move forward. Um, one of those ideas you may remember. Don't put it out here on Facebook right now. Don't put it out here on the system. But one of the ideas we, we you and I talked about um, a year and a half ago. I'd still like to do that. I think that could be very, very beneficial. So let's just schedule a time and uh, we'll get together and kind of run, bounce some ideas off of each other. But I think it could be very, very beneficial. Um, and uh, maybe Miss Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay. I know you're trying to address the vacancies in law enforcement nationwide. How do we encourage recruits and retain the best of our community? What's working in Newport News and keep Scott? Man, that wow, that's a great question. So, let, Scott, I'm going to skip you just for a second. For those that were asking about the prayer event, uh, it is 2 to 3. It is on Sunday, January the 23rd at Todd Stadium. So it's an hour, several pastors. I will be there uh, to, to hear, right, to to receive prayer that, that others are, are praying. I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I think that is extremely beneficial. So it is this Sunday at Todd Stadium from 2 to 3. Now, Scott, you talked about retention. That is the number one priority for us this year. Two areas. One, to fill all our dispatch vacancies. I think it's about 10, maybe 12. And the other is to fill our spots in, in the police department. So uh, our vacancies, my goal, we have a class of 13. We started with 20. We have a class of 13 that will graduate in mid-March. Uh, and then we needed to get a class of 30. That was our goal in January. So we were supposed to do mid-December. Then we moved to January. I will not go past February 1. And the reason I won't go past February 1st is because they're in the academy. They get mad at me seven or eight months, right, until because I keep adding classes on. Uh, but I need the class out by the end of the summer so I can fill some things that we should have officers in now that I don't. So I should have some officers in some places that I don't have. But we're being affected just like other departments. I, I talked to our friends here in the Hampton Roads area and and in departments across the state that are experiencing shortages. Uh, I told you I was just down in, if you remember, I was just down in our recruiting division just before I came up here, and uh, our goal was, was 30. I think we're looking at 27. So I, want, I still want 30, but it looks like we're looking at 27. Uh, so that will help us. That, that will help us. But I won't see those officers until, until mid or the end of August. So those 13 that graduate in March will fill some holes, holding pattern, if you will. But that class of, of 30 is really what we need to fill some things that we don't have. But I want to say this. I know that there's, there are some shortages. And I see officers coming in on the day off. I see officers staying late. Um, and I'll tell you, that's impactful to me. Because we pay them. They want to go home with their families. They need to rest. But they stay and come in on their day off and spend time here to serve the citizens of this community. So what do we do? Well, I think our pay is pretty competitive to the region. I don't think everyone picks a department just because of you make $2,000 more here or $1,500 more there. And I will tell you, most of the people that I interview, even the one that I came in on, on Saturday, um, they, they, they tell me that when they join our process or go through the process, we try to have it done in about 30, 35 days, and how they are treated means a big difference to them. Um, that we make that our starting with our recruit recruitment, that our recruiters make people feel like we want you to join this department. 
that I, I try to portray that I want you to be part of a family. I, it's important to me uh, that people feel and know that they matter and that they're valued. It's certainly because of the training um, that we invest in them, um, they become very, very hot commodities. And every department is looking for good people. Uh, we're trying to do things through social media. We're trying to reach a younger generation with TikTok videos. Uh, actually, an individual called last week and said, I'd like to come work for your agency because it looks like a fun place to work. Uh, so it's right, getting attention, but also that this is a professional organization. We're going to spend seven or eight months training, and then you're in uh, field training for another three or four months before you're ever released on your own. Uh, so we're going to make a big investment. Um, and then, you know, ma making sure that we're uh, comparable, compatible to, to the work that we do. Uh, I'd like to see our staffing overall. Because of the calls for service we had, I'd like to see this department at about 500 people. Uh, not so we can go out and make more arrests, right? But so I can interact more with the community and youth centers, so I can interact more with our youth, so I can do more with YMCA and more with the Boys and Girls Club, that I can have officers more uh, in our elementary schools and interacting with the youth of the city that I can deploy in some of the areas that are more challenged that face some of the higher crimes in other parts of our community. Those are things that I could pay more attention and more direct focus on some of the uh, complaints we get about traffic and speeding. I know that in some neighborhoods uh, those are real issues. So it, it's, it's valuing people. It's marketing this department. A lot of it is, well, we didn't know you were there. It's going outside our comfort zone. We're actually sending a recruit and his training officer and one of our recruiters to a college, to an institution, and having him go there and talk about this department. I would love to build a relationship and it'd be a feeding school to us. And I'm not just talking police work, I'm also talking in, in, in communications and the civilian side that we have here. Um, I'm not seeing officers lose to other departments in the area. I have seen some that, uh, this is a military town, right? It's a military city. So there are individuals that will come here and work three, four, five years and if their husband or their wife is sent somewhere else, they may follow, they're following them, right? So we have had people that are leaving and have gone to uh, a smaller department in California or a smaller department in North Carolina. But I'm not seeing officers leave here and join other, other departments here. I'm seeing that something has taken them away. And I'm also seeing that, that for some, they realize that city policing is not for them or that police work is not for them or that there's pressure from husbands or wives or family, kids, sons and daughters, that I worry about you, I don't, I don't want you in that profession. So it's trying to, to create an environment, uh, but I do believe it's a calling. I do believe it's a calling. So if someone wants to get in this field, why should they pick Newport News, right? It's because you're valued, we have all kinds of opportunity, we have college reimbursement, um, we have great benefit package. There are numerous opportunities, and we are a young department. So there, there is a lot of movement, right? You get to do a lot of different things very, very quickly. We're also very, very technology-based, right? Whether it is our real-time crime center, where it's giving every officer a cell phone, where we're trying to move to go to paperless um, and be able to do reports on, on phones, that technology. I haven't really shared that a lot with the men and women in this agency, but that's where I'd like to be. Uh, it, 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 technology, I think, is key. It moves much faster. And it's much more, the more I can do to put officers interacting with our citizens. Uh, I have a compassion for youth. We're going to be community oriented, community engagement. Uh, we're going to work with, with our grassroots organizations. Those are things. Those are things. But above all, that this is a city where you get to serve people and you're going to be valued here. You matter. And I went way off. I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, Annette, prayer changed everything. Thank you so much. Um, did I miss one above Annette? Um, yeah. I think she had a question about oh, yeah, the Will there be multiple? Uh, now, I will tell you, I, I know several pastors that will be there, but I don't want to speak out of turn. I'll, I'll find a flyer and get it posted, and it'll, it'll kind of lay everything out. I don't want to say something wrong. I do that enough, believe me. Uh, Robin, have a great afternoon. Back to work. Catch you later. Stacy. Robin, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate that. It's okay to agree. To, yeah, Robert, absolutely. You don't get what you want. You get what you be. It's very good. Uh, moms know I'm using her. Mom knows I'm using her <laughs> Facebook page. I just got home from school. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Uh, Christopher, Christopher, how you doing, my friends? Good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Um, are you all hiring for dispatch? Yes, yes, yes. 
And we, if you're interested or anyone is interested in being a police officer in this city or in dispatch, you let me know and we will fast track it. We have some of the best trainers. We have some of the best technology. I'm telling you, we do have the best recruiters. They move. They know how to get things done. They'll come in on their day off. They'll stay late. They'll do it on the weekends. We can do it all in one day. Uh, you just got to make sure you return the phone calls. But yes, we are hiring for dispatch. We are hiring for police officers. We're going to keep those recs open. If that's something you're interested in, all I really need is a name and number, and we'll call you today. Right? That's how important. we got to push that. Right? You can't just sit back like we did before. Well, we're hiring, and we hope people apply. No, let's go out and bring in good people. Right? Bring in good people and bring them into this department. Uh, Mr. Hunter, thank you, my friend. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, Lisa. Nope, it's okay. It's my fault. Uh, where we go? Where we go? Lisa, uh, many thanks to the officers who work overtime. Lisa, absolutely, because they pay. They, it is a tremendous benefit, uh, not only to to other officers but our community. Did I miss a couple? Mm -hmm. Let's go back up a little bit. Yes, I don't want it. That's true. All right, right there. You don't get what. You, very good. Okay. Yeah, nice. I got my community. We got uh, Scott. Thanks. Scott, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Um, I'll be a part of the Citizen Academy next month. I'm so excited. Good. We need good people in that academy, and it's great. It, the Citizens Academy is a tremendous benefit. We do that for youth, and we also do that for our citizens. Uh, and I use that as one of the qualifiers, or as the qualifier, uh, to serve on our uh, Use of Force Review Board. And just touching base on that, and then I'm going to answer your question about what it takes to be a, to be a dispatcher. 18, 18 years old. High school diploma. We can teach everything else. Here's one thing I can't teach you. Here's the secret. How do you, to become a Newport News police officer or a Newport News dispatcher? Here's the secret. Don't write that. Don't, don't. You have to have a heart for people. I want you to care about people. Everything else we can teach you. I can teach you systems and computers. I can teach you how to move things around. The only one around here that has trouble with that is me. But you got to have a heart for people. You get that from, from who you are, from your core. You get that from your upbringing, your parents, your family, your brothers and sisters, uh, teachers, and sports coaches, and, and mentors. That's what it takes. Just have a heart for people. And you can do wonderful. What, what, what better profession where you get to help people in times of crisis every single day? That takes special people. There's not a, not a lot of people are willing to do that. So that's 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 what it takes to be a dispatcher. That's what it takes to be a police officer. There's classes that you go through, but we'll get you through those. I'm looking for people who care about other people, who care about youth. That's what I'm looking for. Um, our use of force review board. So uh, individuals go to the Citizen Police Academy. They spend nine, ten, eleven weeks talking about opening the doors of the department about why we do what we do. What is use of force? What is what do we do in training? How are we recruiting? Uh, what why do we do these type of reports? Why are they classified this way? Uh, how long is the academy? Those type things. How do we do investigations? And then once you graduate, I will ask you uh, every month, we do a use of force review board. And on that review board are five citizens and four officers, a sergeant, an officer, a sergeant, a lieutenant, a captain. So nine total. I chaired along with Chief Grinstead. We don't vote. We just keep it moving. Internal Affairs shows you the video unedited. Every officer in Newport News wears a body worn camera, shows you the, the incident. Not 30 seconds that sometimes people put on Facebook and then all the captions, right? Well, here, here's four officers just, just hurting it. No. It's the full five or six minutes. Here's an individual who wants to hurt himself, who has some mental illness and is going off, and it takes four officers to restrain him from hurting himself, right? What, not what, oh, I, got, I drove by and I, and I saw four officers on this individual and I put on Facebook, look how they're brutalizing people. No, 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 no. Here's four officers who've been talking to someone who said that he wants to hurt himself or herself and tries to, and the officers try to prevent that. Those, those are the things, and, and they see what use of force is, uh, and then they vote. Those nine, five citizens, four officers, they vote. It's in policy, it's out of policy, or it's in policy, but maybe here's some things we can do different. And in the side of the room, we have our academy staff, so any question that those citizens ask, why do you tase this way? Why did you not make an arrest quicker? Why did you decide to back away from this situation? They can explain this is the law. This is how we train. This is what we want our officers to do for safety. 
we knew other individuals were coming, so we stepped back. Um, all of those uh, play a role. So I, I think it's important to have citizen engagement. I also will ask some of those citizens who go through the Citizens Academy to help sit on panels and help select our next officers, our next who gets promoted to sergeant. Help me decide who is the next lieutenant or captain. I think citizens ask different questions than, and look at different things than, than I'm going to look at as a chief of police. Um, so I, I, I rely on our citizen input a lot. I think that's important. Um, what, uh, what's it take to be? Uh, I was once an MPD and always will be at heart. Love you, got. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate the time and service here that you did and you gave this city. Thank you, Faith. Uh, oh, thank you, Faith. I appreciate that. I do have heart for people. Where can I find info? So, uh, if you will send us a number, or you will call us here at the police department, I will get you hooked up with a recruiter today. Can we post that number? Uh, Kelly, but if you send us your number through here, and I don't know if you do that through message or how that works. We'll send them a message. Uh, but I will have a recruiter call you today. Uh, can I get the link to the job, please, and thank you. So I think, I think on the city's website that it is already posted, but I will tell you the same thing. If you're interested, I will have a recruiter call you today, and they can answer those direct questions. How long does it take? What do we think? Walk you through the app. You can come here. You can come here to headquarters, and we'll fill out the application with you. We'll do. We'll pull up a laptop. I got plenty around here somewhere. We'll pull up. I won't do it. I won't mess it up. But you come to headquarters, tell us you want to be a dispatcher. We'll do the application online with you, right? Then we'll just get the process started. Or if we have to do it over the phone. We're going to make. As, we're going to do as much as we can to make it a smooth process. What I'm, I do not want to get bogged down by all this other stuff. I want people to come in here. They want to be. They want to serve the citizens of Newport News, right? Make this a safer city, help people that are going through crisis and are committed. Now they're committed and they're going to stay the course. It is an academy, so it takes a couple months to get through it for the dispatcher side. And then there's all kinds of training that goes along with it. But if that's what you want to do, we have people to help you get there. I promise you that. Um, uh, I do have your info. You gave it to me a few weeks ago. Can I email you? Yes, absolutely. You can email me. Absolutely. Um, yes, we'll send a message with my number. That is perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to working with you both. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, have I caught up with everything? Yeah. So uh, we mm -hmm. talked about recruiting. We talked about uh, our friend Sergeant Luce who passed away. We talked about staffing our academy. We hit on the graduates in mid-March, and then the other one starts February 1st. Our promotion ceremony. So uh, we did a promotion ceremony uh, just before the end of the year. We promoted a new assistant chief, cap uh, captain hires now assistant chief hires. We promoted uh, captains and lieutenants. But I couldn't get the sergeants done quick enough. I didn't want to rush through it. So they've all been promoted and selected. And there's a couple civilians that have also received promotions. But I don't want to. I didn't want to rush through that. So uh, it's important to me. They have been promoted. They're in place now. But they, they deserve their day where their family pins them or, their, or recognizes them with their plaque on, the, on their promotion. So uh, I, I'm working with Kelly. And if you didn't know, uh, Ms. Kelly King and, and her shop just do a phenomenal job in our media relations side of the house. She's sitting with me today. Uh, Sarah got us hooked up, and Kelly's here. So, Julie, if you're home on your day off watching us, Kelly, we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Uh, so, Kelly, I first thank you for helping me today. But um, when we talk about... Um, that ceremony, we're, we're, we actually talked a little bit about it this this morning. That I'm looking to do that around mid February. That I want those those sergeants and civilians that have gotten promoted to have their their special day, and because they've earned it and they 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 deserve it. They deserve it. Um, Debbie, hey Chief, Happy New Year. So sad about. Yep, he wasn't. He he was and always will be. He'll always be a member of this family. Um, I learned a lot from 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 my friend Jerry. Uh, he teased me. Um, he enjoyed that. So I will keep that going on as I tease Jonna. Uh, I got to, matter of fact, I'll probably give her a little hard time this afternoon. So I, I, I hit on things that I wanted to talk to you all about. I'm going to do the year-end press conference. Do we stream that, Kelly? Will we stream that on Facebook when we do that? Yes, so, like so on January the 28th at 10 o'clock, you know why I'm pausing? I'm letting you all write that down. See, see you. Got that. January the 28th at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll do our year-end press conference, and I will show you the crime numbers of the city. You'll see us kind of compare ourselves over the last five or six years where crime where crime has gone. Uh, over the last five or six years, we've had a steady decrease, and then we had an increase this year, about 
Um, you'll hear me say then, as I say now, as you've heard me say before, those are incidents and in numbers. And I look at them to see what are our trends? Are we moving in the right direction? Are, are our strategies and initiatives making progress? But I know, and every member of this department knows, that every one of those numbers reflects an individual, a person, a family, a neighborhood, a community. We don't never lose track of that. Sometimes people worry, well, Chief, you just look at crime. No, I know what those numbers represent because I'm at those scenes. Because I get a report every Thursday in our Intel meeting or our ComStat meeting what crime is and where's the suspect? Are we any closer on this case? How is the victim doing? I know what those are. But I also look at those numbers because I need to know if our initiatives and our, and our tactics are working. Are we reducing speeding in this neighborhood? Do I need to put more manpower or back off now, it seems, and let's move somewhere else? Is this a particular neighborhood where we've seen crime go down but reports go up? All right, what's that correlation? I need to look at that and understand that. We track and analyze everything in this department. That's one of the things I want to increase on is our crime analysts. As we, our real-time crime center, our aggravated assault, our, our narcotics and gang division, uh, I want them, uh, you know, and I understand that people, uh, there's turnover and people leave and, and go on to, to something else or retire, but we're going to invest in, in individuals and in youth, and it may take us a little bit, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, but, but all of those things, I think, play a role. So we'll, we'll do that, um, that press conference on January the 28th. It'll be 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll live stream it. Uh, look, I was going to hold this in secret. Now you guys are going to maybe give it away. So, Kelly, after I say this, you got to delete it. you got to go back and block it. Usually on that day, you'll get reporters from the, the media outlets, right? Channel 3, uh, Wavy 10, Channel 13, the Daily Press. And a lot of times after I, I'll give about a 20-minute presentation, there will be some question and answer. This year, I am inviting the reporters from the schools. So when I was a kid, we had like a school newspaper. Uh, I'm sure technology is so much more advanced now. But um, if individuals from any of the schools, any of the reporters in the schools, the youth of our city would like to come and, and be at that press conference um, and ask me questions, I will answer it. I want the youth of this city to know that I value them that their voice matters to me. I think they're some of the most talented people in this city. So if there are, uh, I, I met with just Dr. Parker and Rashad Wright last week, I should have mentioned it. I've got our community youth and outreach team reaching out. But if there's a reporter in the schools, school newspaper or, or media program, if you would like to, to come and attend that press conference, that, that briefing, and ask questions, I, I, would I welcome it. I think it's important I will welcome it. Now, I, I, I'm not going to go in to tell you about uh, who a suspect is in this case, and we did it. But I am going to give you an overview of the city and the department, what we're focusing on, where we came from, where we're at, what are, what are our plans for the future. And then I'll show you charts and graphs that, that quantify evidence-based and data-driven why we do what we do. We will talk about motives in homicides that we've had. What are we seeing deaths in our city for? Most of the people know each other. Most of them involve firearms. Most of it is because there's an argument that goes on back and forth and because of how many firearms we have in circulation, not just here in Newport News, but in the Hampton Roads area. You've already heard some other chiefs say that. But we'll talk about those things and talk about some strategies that we have. Um, what you won't hear is, is I give up. We're going we're gonna to keep we're gonna keep moving forward and keep striving. The, the, those who stay the course, who stay the course, don't get frustrated and quit and just walk away. And why is that? Because the citizens of this city deserve it, and they need it. And they need it. That's why I value so much the men and women that come to work here. They never know. They never know the impact they make on people's lives, and it does matter. It makes a difference. Uh, which Newark are we talking? Which Newark? I couldn't understand that one either. <laughs> Paul, gotta help me out with that. Annette, thank you for caring about the youth and the future. Yeah, now Annette, I'll tell you, they drive me crazy at times. I'm letting you know right now. They drive, they drive me crazy, but but they are so advanced, uh, and I do think it's harder growing up today than than ever before. The, all the all the technology that's out there and the social media, I think it's, I think that's very very challenging. But uh, yeah, the youth matter. We have a young adult police commissioner program, and I enjoy interacting with those young people. And they show up to city council. Cameron comes to city council. He's sitting on the second row, and he beats me to the council meeting. And he comes there, right? He's a high school kid. Why? Because he cares. 
He cares. He wants to know what we can do better. How do we make things work? He wants to hear. He wants to, 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 to listen to what other uh, leaders in the community are saying. I, I just, I, I just get, they, they all just so impress me when I hear things that they're doing, colleges they're going to, jobs they're working at, those that have come and joined our police department, those that work over in property and evidence. That's impressive to me. They matter to me. So, Nat, thank you. I, I agree with you. You're one of the... Uh, I don't know about I don't I don't know about that, um, but I, I will I, I will try to be open and transparent. I think it's okay to say we're sorry. Uh, I think that that shows the human side. We don't just because I wear this badge and this patch. We don't always get it right. We don't we make mistakes. Believe me, we make mistakes. But I think we have to own them and be open and upfront and honest about them. That yeah, we 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 didn't you know, we don't always get it right. And even when it's you know by policy or law that we got it right, how can we do it better? And that's what I'm looking for. We have great partnerships, whether it's um, Mr. Coleman, Rob Coleman, with our, our police foundation, or with the he and Howe with the Boys and Girls Club, uh, Dr. Parker and Richard Wright with our schools, the stuff that we do with the, our different high schools, Achievable Dreams, and the, and the programs we have there, uh, great faith leaders interaction, you know, things that the faith leaders are coming together. Uh, Pastor Swan and others talking about um, how do we do some basketball programs and have have free spaces where we have people come that if they just want to get out of the community for a little bit and get around that somewhere they can uh, interact, right? I don't care if they're sitting and doing schoolwork and we're helping people with, with uh, some of their classwork, mentoring, if they're playing basketball, if they're just coming to hang out and, and chill among other, a place that where young people can go and, and feel safe and, and interact with one another. I think that's important. If it's a midnight basketball thing, I think that's important. If it's, it's a coaching and playing with the, the kids in the Boys and Girls Club across the uh, up and down Newport News. I think that's important. Being at Todd Stadium you know, when the football season is on and just interacting with our parents that are there and watch, watching our, our high school kids play ball or basketball, baseball, whatever it might be. I think that's important. I think that's where we have to make our investment. And uh, I do believe we just got to stay the course. Now, I we're going to be the police in this city. There, there, there are individuals out there that want to take advantage of other people, and we're not going to tolerate that. We're not going to, that's why we've structured our department with our narcotics division, our gang division, our aggravated assault, our homicide division, domestic violence, its own division, our special victims. That's why we've increased the number of, of forensic technicians that we have. That's why we're going to increase the number of crime analysts that we have. And we're going to increase, increase, increase technology. We're going to make sure that our patrol, each, each precinct is staffed the way it should be to address the calls for service in our community. And we're going to continue to try to bring in the best talent and keep the best talent we have. That's that's at least my my goal. I think, look, I didn't even read it off anything. That's just from my heart. Um, I appreciate the time you've allowed me to spend with you today. I'm I'm going to jump off here. We've got a couple uh, crime analysts that are here today. We're going to get them paired up with some some uh, some of the senior analysts that we have. I appreciate everybody that joined in today. We're going to do this again this evening at, at six o'clock. Are you back with me, Kelly? She Probably. doesn't know it. I oh. don't know. Kelly or, look, <laughs> Kelly or Sarah won't be here because somebody's yeah. got to turn this thing on. You imagine me sitting here. I'd be here all night trying to, to, to figure out how to do this. So uh, it makes, makes me want to come back. Hey, nothing's off the table, my friend. We've got all kinds of positions. Uh, but I, I appreciate all you that, that took time today. I know there's so many things that are hectic. Uh, so if you if you weren't able to watch, maybe you can watch later. Or if, didn't, if I will say this, if I missed a question, I greatly apologize. As the screen goes through, Kelly does a great job, Sarah and Julie. But if I missed something or didn't answer something, I apologize. Now we'll go back and take a look. Uh, a couple of those that said they're inter interested in dispatching, uh, I'll tell you, Captain Tejans and Laura down there is doing an amazing job. Uh, that is such a huge part of this organization. Uh, but I do believe that the state is looking at this department um, and some of the talent here that, that I know other entities have absorbed and are absorbing, and I, I, I get it. I hate to see people leave, but I understand. Um, so thank you all. We'll do this again at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Be safe, and we'll see you later this evening. Thank you. Are we still